Can you expand on the topic of Schumann resonance? Is that in your wheelhouse? Are you comfortable talking a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. And and again, I, I you know, to kind of go off what you were just stating there, that I think we do have a little bit in, in the last like century or so of an arrogance to look back on certain civilizations and say, wow, they're kind of, you know, so uncivilized and they didn't have to and they didn't use iPhones, so we're so much better. When in rea reality is they had such a better understanding of nature. And we have to turn to those civilizations and look at what they were able to accomplish, even ancient Egypt, you know, tr in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. These are wonderful, wonderful applications, and, and they had so much to give. And I think the problem was at the time the, the wording was different. So when you hear about Qi, yin yang, when you hear about all these, you start to say, ah, what's that? You could literally put that into quantum physics now and prove it scientifically that what they were saying was accurate. They were just using different terminology. They had a different language, just like now. We've completely changed our language in the last hundred years. Where slang now is in our dictionary, and you went back a hundred years, they'd be like, "What are these people saying?" And so, I, I think it's really, really, um, you know, short-sighted to dismiss what we have have accumulated in wisdom through thousands of years and not apply it to medicine and health. And I think that leads into something like understanding Schumann resonance and the idea that our earth is actually resonating at a specific frequency and vibration that actually helps us to regenerate. And one of the things I learned in speaking to certain experts is that when you cut that off, there's a lot of people that understand EMFs and radiation are not good for us. At the same time, the idea that some people have is to block all radiation, go into a Faraday cage and live completely cut off from any radiation. So you're blocking the bad. But the problem with that is you're blocking the good. And we know this. When we sent astronauts out into space for the first time ever and left them there any period of time, they began to deteriorate. They're literally, they began to atrophy. They would be told to work out, do things. They were given all nutrition. And they shouldn't have atrophied, but they did. Incredibly, they got back down and they just, you know, couldn't even hold them with their own weight up. And that wasn't because of the gravitational differences or anything. It's because they were missing the Schumann waves. And they actually had to build a Schumann resonator and they put it up in the international space. They put it in everyone. So this isn't something like, you know, people think, oh, yeah, grounding in the Earth's frequencies, go hug a tree. Like, no, NASA is doing this, right? So... That's pretty uh, high tech, I would say. And that is the truth of it. I think a lot of times we don't understand we are on this. This earth helps us to survive. Without it, you know, that whole idea of, oh, we could go colonize other planets. I don't really know. You'd have to bring a pretty big generator with you for that because we have, you know, basically become one in the same with this earth because it gives us so much, not just the abundance of every single, you know, uh, plants and vegetable and everything we eat and the animals that eat that, but literally the waves that flow through us every day. And then if you look at something like geopathic stress, you're looking at the opposite. There's always this level of polarity, right? Duality to everything. There's always a good and bad in everything. And that is the law of polarity that also applies to the waves that come from earth. So you have Schumann waves, which are wonderful, but then you have these intersections, sometimes nodes and peep, peep in areas in the earth itself that are harmful, that cut off the Schumann wave, that have underground, let's say, uh, fault lines or one underground rivers or just, you know, pi pipelines and things like that, that can stop the Schumann waves. And actually, we've noticed that people that live in homes where there is no Schumann, when they have geopathic stress, have lots of problems. And those are the types that you see go from doctor to doctor to doctor and never get an answer until you say, have you checked for geopathic stress? Have you done anything with your environment? Have you, you know, do you feel better when you don't sleep there or anything? And you start to put together this, you know, these pieces of the puzzle that show you're missing those human waves. You have geopathic stress that is negatively impacting you. And I think that's, that's really, really interesting because you know, so many people now live, I, I have to say, California is in the greatest place to live always. It's beautiful, but you have a huge fault line going through there. And so many patients that come from there 
are impacted by geopathic stress. And there are tons of books on this. There's tons of literature. Again, you could follow the Schumann waves. You could follow the electromagnetic fields of the earth, how they shift and everything. Uh, but we can't just dismiss it all as not being a, a one of the factors that can be either helping us to preserve health or causing disease. And I think, you know, that's that's something every doctor should be taught and every practitioner and, and healthcare provider should be taught about these things in school. Unfortunately, most don't even know what Schumann resonance, geopathic stress, any of this is. And we bring it up to some patient and it just goes over the head, which I understand. It's not something regularly taught, but there's there's tons of science and data behind this.